Hello, everyone. So good to be back with you all today. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jody Lowe, and I am the RISE Program Administrator. Today, we're hosting our second of four Ask Me Anythings this week, focusing on the investigate phase of the RISE Challenge. Last week, we hosted our first Ask Me Anything, and if you weren't able to attend or you want to find it, you can access it on our YouTube, and you can also check your email. We always send emails with the link to the video, and uh, my team will also put the link to the last week's webinar in the um, chat as well. So one quick thing. I wanted to remind you all that if you haven't already to join the RISE Discord community where you can meet other RISE challenge applicants and ask questions. My team will also be sharing the link to join the Discord community later on in this webinar. Okay, so for any of you who this is your first time joining the RISE AMA, I'm going to quickly just outline the format. So first we're going to go over, over an overview and talk about tips for phase two. Then. I'm gonna answer some of the many pre-submitted questions that you all asked or any questions that you have, feel free to drop them in the little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. I have my team working behind the scenes to make sure that you know as many questions get answered if I'm not able to answer them on the webinar. Last week, we got so many great questions. We really wanna make sure that you all get your questions answered. So one quick thing to remember about RISE is that you must complete your project for the RISE Challenge by April 1st. After that, we'll select 500 finalists who receive $1,000 in benefits for education. And then from there, we're gonna select 100 RISE Global winners who will receive support for life based upon need. So now let's dive into the investigate phase. I am super excited to have my friend back with me again today, Christine from the Challenge Institute. Uh, Christine, how are you? So happy to have you back with us. Good, thanks Jody. how are you doing? Great to be here. All right, so let's get started, everyone. Um, last time we were together, we talked about the engage phase, right? So tonight we're gonna focus in on investigation, but let's do a recap of kind of the entire RISE challenge. Um, so the RISE challenge con consists of four phases, right? Um, with engage, you identified your big idea, your essential question and your challenge. Now, as we move into investigate, you are going to ask questions and find answers, um, which will be your research um, in order to come up with a, a synthesis and a conclusion that will lead you to a solution. Then you're going to go into the act phase where you'll plan, develop, and implement your solution. And then finally, you'll do a final reflection to wrap up. Um, keep in mind, I said this last time we were together, but once you do complete all four of the phases, you do have to complete a project summary. And the project summary is, is just a really quick snapshot for us to see your big idea, your challenge and your solution. So tonight we're going to talk mainly about investigate. And as you're thinking about your challenge, uh, we wanna point out that investigate and act are going to take you uh, the most time. We anticipate 10 plus hours. Um, could be more, could be a little bit less, but know that this is where you're going to spend the bulk of your time um, because this is where you're doing your research and planning out your solution. Okay, so let's break down the investigate phase. So now you have your challenge, which is super exciting. We, uh, Mark and I have really enjoyed reading your challenges in the Discord community. So now that you have that challenge statement, it's time to move into investigate. So by asking guiding questions related to your challenge and answering them, um, you're going to set the foundation for a solution. So we want you to take the time to learn as much as you possibly can about your challenge. And please don't rush toward a solution, we'll get there. Um, so let's break it down into three steps. The first step is guiding questions. You're going to hear me say the word questions a lot tonight, so bear with me, but that's a, a huge component of the investigate phase. Um, so it begins with you generating questions related to your challenge. And these are going to guide your research. So I encourage you to sit down, whether you're writing on a piece of paper. Um, I personally like to use sticky notes when I'm doing this or a digital tool, but write down as many questions as you can think of uh, relating back to your challenge. The more, the better at this point. So once you have a really good list, look at those questions and try to consolidate ones that are similar um, and try to break it down into certain categories of questions. 
So by creating categories, you're going to find connections and uh, more efficient ways to answer your questions. So think to yourself after you have all of these questions, um, which ones are the most important for me to move forward? This is where you're gonna break it down to your five to 10 gu guiding questions that you're going to tackle. Um, so we want you to think about um, what are those must know questions that are going to rise to the top of your list? There might be must know questions that'll be at the top and those good to know may go to the bottom of the list. Um, so the goal is for you to narrow it down to five to 10, but that's just a recommendation, right? If you have a little bit more or a little bit less, that's okay. Um, so the, the example we gave you from uh, the videos that you can find on the Hello World app and on the Rise Challenge website was help my community eat healthier was the challenge. So some of the example guiding questions there were, um, what does healthy eating look like? Or what gets in the way of healthy eating? Is healthy food available in my community? Why or why not? So um, any question, you can ask absolutely anything about your challenge. Um, and like I said, the more the better at this point. Okay, so you have your five to 10, you've broken it down and you're gonna jump into step two, which is your guiding activities and resources. So you're going to work to answer your questions using uh, a variety of activities and resources that could include things like um, online databases, libraries, uh, your social networks, um, communities, local expert, you could even reach out to global experts. So um, some examples of activities that you could do could be things like surveys, polls, interviews, um, the possibilities here are endless. So how can you find answers to your guiding questions and what are those answers, right? Which will lead us into step three, which is your synthesis. So that's uh, once all of your questions are answered, uh, we want you to create a conclusion or a synthesis. So your synthesis is going to set the foundation as we move into the next phase, which is ACT. So that was, that was a lot to take in. Um, so let's dive into some investigation tips that'll hope, hopefully get you off to the right start. Um, so first and foremost, I mentioned this last time as well, but it's so important to use your challenge planner. Um, the challenge planner is one of your resources, again, in the Hello World app or um, in the Rise Challenge website. This does not have to be turned in, but it's a great place for you to jot down your ideas. Um, so, and we've laid it out really nicely for you here. If you, if you look into that green section, so you'll list out your questions, your activities on how you'll solve, how you'll answer those questions, and then what are the answers to your questions? It's, it's pretty simply put, um, ask questions and find answers at this point. Okay, so the second tip, second tip we have for you is to use all of the resources that we provide for you. So yes, we have the challenge planner, um, but my colleague Mark and I also created uh, two resources for you around becoming great questioners and research tips. So. Um, they're quick and easy to read. Um, we definitely recommend checking them out as you're going through the investigation phase. Number three, I mentioned this before, um, but a clear set of guiding questions is so important. So make sure that these are prioritized. These are the must know questions that you need to answer in order to move forward. Um, number four, work hard to answer your guiding questions. So answering guiding questions may not be easy. You may stumble, you may come across roadblocks and that's okay. Um, it, it's going to be a challenge, but we want you to be creative, think outside the box um, and know that, that we'll get there, right? In one way or the other. I know that a lot of you brought up the challenges you're having in the Discord community, but um, just keep, keep thinking of new solutions, new ways to answer those questions um, and, and figure it out. Number five, um, use your findings to develop a synthesis. I mentioned this, that synthesis piece is so incredibly important. Once you have all of your findings, all of your questions answered, how can you pull it all together to come up with that conclusion that'll help inform your solution? And then finally, um, look back at your challenge to gauge if you're heading in the right direction. So as you're working through Investigate, always have the challenge in the back of your mind. And this may seem really simple, but sometimes we could get off track as we're asking our questions. So always keep that, you know, keep it written down somewhere, say it over and over again, make sure you're really focused in on your challenge and how you're going to solve your challenge. And one that's not listed there, um, we, we definitely want to make sure you know that we are always here to help you. Uh, Mark and I are doing office hours every Tuesday and Wednesday um, from eight to nine Eastern. So please pop in, ask your questions. We are here to help. Um, and if it's outside of those office hours, feel free to um, tag us in the Discord community as well. 
So um, Jody, last time we were together, I know that we walked through um, a potential challenge that you would have. I know we started out with sustainability and then we narrowed it down to water. Was that right? Do you, re do you remember your essential question and challenge? Uh, yes, uh, last week was so long ago, it feels I know. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so last week I put my shoes, myself in the shoes of, of an applicant and um, my essential question was, how can I improve water quality where I live? And then my challenge was, I decided it to be educate people about clean water. Perfect. Now well, that's a great start. So have you thought about any guiding, uh, guiding questions that you would ask or things at the top of your mind to get you started? Yeah. So we think like some guiding questions could be, does my community have an issue with water? If so, what is that issue specifically? Does this sound like I'm on the right path with my guiding questions? Yeah, definitely. And I would even um, take another step back, Jody. Um, I know your your challenge was to educate about clean water. So I'm wondering, you know, who you want to educate, what who is in your community, um, where do your community members go to learn, how do people like to learn, who needs to know about clean water. Um, so I think between the two of us, we just rattled off at least you know eight or nine questions, which is pretty easy to do. So we would keep going along that path and then we would decide, you know, of all of these questions we asked, which are the most important to answer to come to an informed solution. So hopefully that was helpful. Yeah, that was actually super helpful. So like, let's think about some potential resources that could help me if I was an applicant find solutions. Like what could I use to find answers to my questions? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's so many that, that we'll talk about tonight, um, but I'm thinking things like, your local newspapers could be a really simple way to start. Um, government reports that you find online, local resources. Um, you could do uh, a survey to see what people in your community are thinking. So you see that's like co a combination of, of resources that you can actually you know, read through and think about and activities that you could actively do like through a survey or an interview of community members or a poll or something like that. Awesome. So one of the things that like RISE is really big on is ensuring that, you know, all applicants, especially in the RISE challenge, have access to resources like the ones you mentioned to complete their challenge and be successful in it. So like what advice do you have to applicants who may not have the resources that you just listed? Yeah, definitely. So every challenge is definitely going to look a little bit different. Um, but we encourage you to access your local experts first um, and think about global experts as well. I know some of us shy away from people that, you know, are, are famous or people that seem out of reach, but um, think about, you know, in times, in COVID-19 times, everybody's working from home. <laughs> people are, are craving that human connection. So reach out, don't be afraid to reach out um, with an email, a phone call even, um, and see who you can connect to. But start with your community, see what happens there, um, be creative um, and ultimately be safe. Um, we know that there's, um, uh, safety protocols in place. We want you to uh, make sure that you share out any of these barriers or roadblocks that you do have because of COVID-19 um, in your reflection videos, but just try your best to think outside the box. We know that everybody's resources are going to look a little bit different. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for that. So now I will welcome our other friend, Mark, also from the Challenge Institute up on the stage. Um, and we will now take some questions. So I uh, just wanted to re remind you all, if you haven't already, there is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen so you can pop in any questions, um, especially now is the perfect time because it is Q&A time. And my team is also, again, behind the scenes working to answer any questions that um, I may not be able to answer. And um, like Christine said, she, her and Mark, do hold office hours within our Discord community, and we will share that link with you um, in the follow-up email that you can always pop into and ask them questions. So, Mark, Christine, um, what of, a lot of the questions that you know we've been really getting from applicants just across the board is like, what tips do you all have um, for applicants to conduct the investigate phase during a pandemic? And I know Christine, you touched upon this, but you know, if you and Mark could expand a little bit more on on that, that would be super helpful. Yeah, I'll jump in. I think Christine did a really good job kind of addressing a lot of those and giving you some options with that. I think um, just want to state, you know, keep safe. Uh, so if you're, if you find as you begin to investigate your challenge, and that's why it's good to 
you know, get that engaged part finished. And as you start digging into uh, your guiding questions and you start doing investigation and you realize that you're gonna hit some brick walls, you may want to cycle back again and rethink your challenge. If it looks like I'm not gonna be able to get the information I need in order to move through this process, you can go back and, and rethink that, that engage and you can um, redo the video, create a new video on, your, um, on the engage and, um, and begin to, you know, so hopefully you don't have to do that, but if you get stuck, get stuck. Don't kind of try to fake your way through that. Um, the other one is just, um, you know, I, I think look for uh, options within your communities that you work in. Use social network. If you don't ask the question, you may not find. If you put that out in your groups, they, your friends may know somebody or their parents may know somebody that has some experience in the area that you're interested in and they can direct you in that way. So I think, you know, leverage your networks and kind of hustle those as much as you can. And I think you'll probably uncover things. And then finally, if you, you know, if you're, if you can't get all the information you need, but you do have enough to have a synthesis, then just be honest that as you, you know, as you do your reflection videos and as that, you know, I would have liked to got to so-and-so, but I just wasn't able to. But I think, you know, as I move forward, I would pursue that. So kind of let us know on what, what um, you know, what you tried and where you got stuck. And uh, so we can get an insight of, you know, how much you pushed through. Awesome, thank you, Mark, that was super helpful. So another question that we've also been getting from a lot of applicants is, what are examples of specific resources I should use in the investigate phase? Sure, I can start. I know I, I rattled off a few ideas to get us started. Um, but before we even think about that, um, as you're diving into information, I know you've heard this many times before in school, but make sure that the resources you're diving into are credible or valid. Um, do your research there <laughs> to make sure that the, the information you're presenting is, you know, is valid. Um, but things like, you know, online databases, journals, use Google Scholar, um, access your, your school library or a public library to find resources. Mark mentioned social networks, which is so important. Um, tap into different online communities or forums, um, local global experts, participate in an online course, look at your textbooks, uh, newspapers, local websites. I mean, we could go on and on with, with resource ideas. And then same as activities could be things like we said, interviews, surveys, polls, experiments, different simulations, um, lots of ideas there. Mark, do you have any, any more to add? No, I, I think that's, I think all those are great. And I'm just going to throw in, a, I've been reading some of the questions and I know there's been some on the synthesis. And I think this leads into what Jody's going to talk about and what to include in the video is the, the synthesis is really, we have all the, we have our questions. We go and investigate those questions and we get kind of findings from those. The synthesis is how do we connect all of those findings? So, you know, I, we answer, I answer these 10 questions. I'm going to read through those and I'm going to begin to, okay, what's the story here? You know, what did I learn? What's interesting here? What did somebody miss? You know, where is the problem or the opportunity in this? And from that should set the stage for a solution. It's like, oh, you know, nobody's really looked at it from this direction. That's an interesting place for a solution. Or, or here's a real problem. Ah, that's it. There's where I should um, address my, my solution. So that synthesis should give you enough information to get you towards the, um, some ideas around solutions which kind of leads to the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like Mark said, uh, we've been getting a ton of questions asking what should I include in my video for the investigate phase. So um, we, so if you have any charts, graphs, websites that you've created, any materials, we ask that you show them in your video. Um, so you don't have to send them as an attachment, but you can just you know, flip your camera and show us what you've been working on and like quickly run through it during uh, the, within the time limit, time limit that's set for the Hello World app. So I hope that's helpful, but yeah, we really encourage you to just show us anything that you've been working on and then, you know, explain it. Um, there's also another place within the Hello World app and the project summary that you can also link things, but we really just encourage that anything you're going to link to just show us um, in the video in, you know, the investigate phase and the other phases. Um, yeah, so I hope that's helpful. Um, so Danielle, Daniela from Mexico asks, does it matter if my investigation is only for my country? 
So uh, I'll take this one. Um, and just one more thing in the planner, I think a real value of the planner is we have prompts at the end of that, the reflection that kind of sets you up to do the videos. So that's why it's worth to work, way, work your way through that. And then that last column, you can really think about what did, what did I learn? What's my synthesis, which will help you um, kind of compile that for the, the video. Uh, so, you know, your investigation should be around your challenge. So if your challenge is local, then your investigation should be local. You could still draw from international resources or national resources. Um, if your focus is, your challenge is focused on a population in another country, then your investigation is gonna take you there. So the investigation is simply, how can I find out enough about my challenge in order to come up with a, a, a meaningful solution? Uh, you know, a correct, not just a guess, but this is why I should do things. Um, there's an interesting one in, in Discord about, well, if my challenge is to create, you know, some a piece of art or something like that, what are the what are the guiding questions? You know, well, the guiding questions that are around art, right? I, you know, I need to find out what you know what's interesting about art. How does art move people? How does art change opinions? If that's the direction of the challenge, but really look at your challenge, and that should lead where. You, how you um, come up with those guided questions. Awesome, thank you. So another question comes in from Lauren in the US. How much time do we have to complete the investigate phase? Sure, I'll take that one. Um, so we, I think I said at the beginning, we, we anticipate this is going to take you 10 plus hours to complete. Um, and I know that we did provide you with suggested timelines, which I think is already tomorrow <laughs> to wrap up and investigate. Don't let that scare you. Um, that is not a, a hard deadline. Please use the time as, as needed um, to get your investigate and act phases complete. Um, but like Jody said, keep that April 1st deadline in the back of your mind. Um, but again, those, those um, suggested timelines are just suggestions. Awesome. And totally, definitely just suggestions. So a uh, question came in from Brooklyn, who is currently on this webinar. So hi, Brooklyn. Uh, thank you for joining. And the question is, if your project idea is something that must be done in the summertime, can you submit a project plan and do the physical project later in the year? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a run at this one. And then, you know, the RISE team, if you want to jump in, is that, um, you know, ideally, we're looking at things that you have an opportunity to put them in action so you can learn if they're successful. You know, think that through is that, you know, project plan, is there a way to do some sort of pilot? Is there some way to do, you know, prototype something and put that in place so you can get a little bit of feedback in order to do it um, the, in full blown in the summer? But if it's all going to happen, then you may want to kind of step back and think, is there you know, some other way that I can do this so I can actually put something into action and, and get that experience of trying it out to see if it solved the, um, solved the challenge? Yeah, and for RISE, we really want to see your project um, by April 1st. So, you know, to Mark's point, if there's anything that you can do um, to really put it into action, um, now, so you know you can present it as your rise uh, challenge project. That would be great and super helpful. Awesome. So another question comes in from Kion in the United States. If I am limited by the time of my submission, should my guiding question should my guiding questions be targeted to what I can accomplish? Yeah, and I think that a lot of the, the questions are, are connected here, right? Um, so we obviously want you to be able to accomplish something by April 1st, um, but we don't want you to limit yourself in your questioning, right? Um, so Kyan, ask as many questions as you can um, and then break it down. Don't, don't leave out that step. We do want you to take the time to ask lots and lots of questions, then narrow it down to that five to 10 questions. So um, don't think about targeting them quite yet, um, we'll get there. Um, but again, we'd love to see as much as we can of a completed project by April 1st. Awesome. Oh, so this is a good question and I'm happy to take this one, but Karani from Tanzania asks, I use WhatsApp for my application. Will this restrict me from RISE updates because of not using the app? 
So for any applicants that are currently on this webinar and are doing the RISE challenge through WhatsApp, um, using WhatsApp will not restrict you from rece receiving any RISE updates. Um, the main ways we communicate with all of our applicants is through email. So definitely check your email for the latest updates. That's where you can find the recording to this webinar and the recording to you know, last week's webinar and the webinars coming up and any just general updates. Also, we do encourage you all, if you have not already, to follow us on social media. So Rise for the World is our handle, and that is where you can find the latest information, updates, and just like some fun uh, online um, like games and challenges that we've created. There was a crossword puzzle that was going around this week, which was super fun. Um, so yeah, those are the main ways to definitely stay up to date. But no matter the platform in which you're applying to Rise, you are not missing out, and we also for WhatsApp, uh, send uh, WhatsApp reminders. So you get a notification as well. Um, so no worries there. Um, awesome. So another person on this webinar asks, could you expand upon what is meant by what difficulties did you encounter? And what would be an example of a difficulty? Yeah, I can take this one. And I think we addressed some of those early on. So the question may have been answered is just, you know, um, access to people. Let's say that I, you know, that I have three people that I really need to talk to in order to ask questions and I can't get a hold of them because they're busy or I can't do it in the time frame I need to. There's a difficulty. So then it's kind of, okay, now what else can I do? Is there a, a different direction I can take this on? Are there other people I can talk to? So, you know, you're going to hit roadblocks along the way. I, I can't get access to a certain resource or, you know, I only get a certain amount of responses back on my survey. Um, so those are the difficulties. And I think we're interested in how you figure out a way around them uh, and then the decision making in that process. Awesome. So Madison, who's also on this webinar. Hi, Madison, and thank you for joining. Um, Mark and Christine, what are your office hours in Discord. <laughs> yes. Um, so we are available on Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 8 to 9 Eastern time. Um, and we are look for the office hours channel in Discord. And that's turned into a pretty rapid fire um, event. So we'll do our best to answer questions in that hour. And if not, we'll follow up with you afterwards. Yeah, Madison, you can, and anyone else on this webinar, that channel is uh, always open in terms of being able to view. So you can always like hop in there, you know, a day after the day, you know, whenever you have time to see if any of the questions that you might have had have been, you know, asked and that Mark and Christine have already answered. Um, yeah. And uh, you can also always email support at riseforthworld.org with any additional questions uh, about the RISE challenge as well. So a, another question. So Jennifer from Columbia. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you for joining. Um, she asks, I live in Columbia, therefore my first language is Spanish. For my project, I want to interview people from my community who speak Spanish. Can I put the audio in Spanish but have English subtitles or what should I do? Mm, okay, this is a good question and I'm happy to take this one. So the answer is yes to both. You can interview users in Spanish and post your video in Spanish as long as there are English subtitles um, so we can understand. But yes, to both of your questions, uh, Jennifer, and thank you for asking that. That's a good one. Ah, okay. Another question from Francisco, who is also on this webinar. Hello, Francisco. Thank you for joining. Um, do you recommend that we make a short script for our video, synthesizing our research as much as possible, or is it better to tell it in our own words and reflect the important learning we have obtained, even if this is not as precise as in the script? I'll take the first cut at this one is, um, you know, I think it's kind of personally, you know, how, how, how you go about things. I think if you feel like in order to express yourself, it helps just to have a script or you're gonna miss things, then then write that script. You're gonna have that script at some level in the synthesis. And then it's that and the uh, prompts that you have that are in the reflection part. So if you've done that work, you pretty much have everything you need. Some people can just read through that and then get on camera and 
be perfectly fine with that. But if you feel like you're going to lose things or you're going to get stuck and then miss things, then I think there's no problem with having a script and, and kind of reading through that script or memorizing that script. So I, I think it kind of de just depends on how comfortable you are in front of a camera and whether you think you're going to be able to capture it or miss things. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Um, another question from Avetis also on the webinar. Hello, and thank you for joining. Um, is it mandatory to ask five to 10 questions or can we ask a bit less? So I, I guess the recommendation was, right, we wanna ask as many as we can first and then narrow it down to those five to 10. Um, I would think, you know, maybe a, four to, 10, 11, 12 would be okay, but let's not, you know, just focus on one or two questions. We need you to come up with, you know, that important research that will inform your solution. Um, that's why we recommended five to 10. And, and that's, that's what we recommend. Awesome. Thank you. So for those of you who haven't already joined the RISE Discord community, we really encourage you to join so that you can meet other RISE community members. Uh, we recently launched it just about a week and a half, half ago. And if you don't know what Discord is, it is an app or web-based platform where you can hear announcements from the RISE team, um, ask questions. That is where Mark and Christine hold their office hours. Um, and really just like be able to exchange ideas about your projects or any other topics that are really of interest to you all. So following this webinar, we will be sending out an email with the link to the recording and also a link uh, for you all to be able to join the Discord community if you have not joined already. Also, if you have, feel free to go to Discord and ask any outstanding questions that you may have. Um, and I am super excited that we will be back here next week to talk about the phase three of the RISE challenge. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a good night, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, and thank you again for joining us.